Last year, for the first time, Made by Google Phones hit store shelves with a fresh look and new name to replace the aging Nexus. While Nexus represented pure Android for the nerds, Pixel was about making something truly great for everyone. And it was. Both the Pixel and Pixel XL set a new benchmark for how good an Android phone could be. Following it up was always going to be a challenge. How do you improve on something that was already so good? Enter the Pixel 2. While a little of last year's Pixel design language has continued on to 2017, the phone looks like something new. The metal-built chassis feels solid and well-made, and despite its slightly rounded corners, still looks and feels very rectangular compared to its predecessor. It also appears noticeably longer. This added length is predominantly down to the front-facing stereo speakers above and below the regular-sized 16 to 9 ratio Full HD screen. While many will see the addition of stereo speakers as a positive, it does mean there's a generous amount of bezel on the front. Considering the whole reason behind having a smaller screened phone is, presumably, to have a smaller device. It's a little confusing that Google has made a phone which is only a couple of millimeters away from being the same length as a BlackBerry Key 1, a phone with a physical keyboard built in. Still, it's nice and narrow, making it easy to hold and use in one hand. With HTC's involvement in building Google's hardware, you'd hope some of the bass filled, loud boom sound stereo audio would make its way to the Pixel 2. Sadly, it doesn't. The front-facing speakers offer very little benefit over your regular single loudspeaker. They're just not very loud. This could be down to the IP67 certified waterproofing, muting the audio somewhat. The speakers are covered by long, slim pill-shaped openings, precisely cut into the front glass, which, by the way, are the only parts breaking the surface of the glass. Glancing around the edges reveals a similar attention to detail. Minimalism and simplicity is echoed in the rest of the phone's look, the bottom edge has just the Type-C port, the top edge nothing, even the SIM tray on the left edge, volume and power buttons on the right blend into the anodized finish of the aluminium edges, and, apart from on the polished, angled chamfers, you can't see any antenna bands at all. It's the same story on the back. The Google logo is barely visible and the fingerprint sensor is color matched to the metal back. The glossy, glass panel on the top, where the camera and LED flash, adds a splash of contrast which helps the Pixel line keep its identity, and sets it apart from all the other smartphones out there. As you may have noticed, there is no headphone jack. We didn't find this particularly troublesome, given our preference for wireless earphones. But in those instances where we wanted to test wired ones, the included Type-C to 3.5mm jack adapter was very useful. While there's nothing especially wrong with the look or build, it's hard not to notice how simple, even basic, it looks compared to its modern competition. Compare it to the Galaxy S8, LG G6 and it starts to look that way. One thing we did notice was that there was a fair bit of shuffling around to make use of the physical controls. The fingerprint sensor is easy to reach with an index finger, but then to get to the power button, which is confusingly placed above the volume rocker, we had to shift the phone. Then, to make use of the squeezable active edge, we'd have to shift the phone again. Still, it's stylish, minimalist and attractive in its own right, and the addition of water and dust proofing means it's not just a classic, understated phone, it's also built to survive whatever you can throw at it. Google equipped the latest Pixel with a 16 to 9 ratio 5 inch AMOLED display, at full HD resolution. It's not the most pixel packed panel out there, but with it only being 5 inches, not being Quad HD doesn't make a massive amount of difference. Unless you're looking at it really close, you're going to see a nice, sharp display. The one thing that surprised us was that we had to keep double-checking that it was, in fact, AMOLED at all. Traditionally, AMOLED-based screens are very vibrant, with vivid colors, eye-popping contrast and deep black.
Pix. Pixel 2s isn't really any of those things. Google has seemingly calibrated these AMOLED screens to appear more natural. That means skin tones don't come out as pink or reddish, which is a good thing. But then, all the other colors are muted as well. Bright blue skies and green grass look a little faded, and there's not as much contrast as we'd like to see. Within the settings, there's a vivid mode which we switched on, and noticed very little difference, if any. Still, there's nothing especially wrong with the display. If you like that natural, accurate, almost LCD-like look, you'll enjoy the Pixel 2's screen. And in all honesty, once we got playing games, flicking through photos and watching movies we forgot our complaints. Everything looks nice enough. And it is nice to see an AMOLED panel where colors aren't far too saturated. Open Netflix, and start watching movies, then it becomes obvious why Google went down this route. It's almost as if the screen was calibrated to be optimal for watching your favorite films on Netflix, and nothing else. The color balance is just better. The reduction of oversaturated reds and oranges means video appears properly color corrected, which isn't something you normally see on AMOLED panels. It's just when you're looking around the phone's home screen and interface that things don't pop as much as you'd hope they would. We're hoping this is something that can be improved in a software update. There is one problem here though. For a phone that's seemingly been calibrated to look amazing watching movies, it has the wrong aspect ratio screen. A 5 inch 16 to 9 panel isn't the most expansive canvas for watching 18 to 9 Netflix content, or 21 to 9 cinematic films. There's some heavy letterboxing, which is especially noticeably on a smaller screen. As you'd expect from a new pure Google handset, it runs the latest clean version of Android. In this instance, that's Android 8.0 Oreo and it comes with a few new features. Like Android N, the app drawer drags up from the bottom of the screen, and you can swipe upwards from any part of the screen to get to it. Perhaps the main difference here is that there's now a Google search bar at the bottom of the display, below the app dock. With screens becoming bigger, longer, it certainly makes sense to have a necessary function placed within easy or reach of your thumb. One cool feature is the now playing feature which, in one fell swoop, aims to kill Shazam's music discovery app, and it would, if it was consistently excellent. When activated, it automatically shows you what you're listening to on the lock screen. If you're like us, there are plenty of times when a song comes on during a movie, TV show, or in a bar, and you want to hear know what it is, with the pixel, all you need to do is look at your lock screen. Chances are, in the time you've heard and thought I wonder what this song is, Pixel 2 has already figured it out and is displaying it on your lock screen. At least, it will if it's a popular song. In our testing, the songs that it does recognize will display on the screen within about 10 seconds. The odd one or two took a bit longer and many others weren't recognized at all. As a couple of examples, it didn't know Benjamin Clementine's Quintessence or Beck's Up All Night. To compare, we turned to the popular Shazam music discovery app and activated the automatic tagging. Shazam's dedicated app seemed to recognize songs quicker, and recognize more of them, including more obscure ones. In other words, there's clearly room for improvement on Google's part. It's certainly no Shazam beat yet, but the convenience of not having to do anything except look at your lock screen is a winning feature. The overall experience in the latest version of pure Android is very clean and tidy, main settings are easy to get to, with more advanced options in each category truncated and collapsible under an advanced tab. Notifications are neatly organized, and indicated with new notification dots above app icons. The new autofill is a goddess end, remembering your passwords and being able to fill them in wherever you are in the interface, whatever app you're in. Compared to Nugget it feels a little swifter and smoother, with more responsive and instantaneous switching between interfaces and apps. One new feature that is coming soon is the Google Lens technology within Assistant, which wasn't available to us during testing. At least, not in the assistant interface. Google Lens is a way to use your camera to search for objects. It's basically an enhanced version of goggles. 
When it's fully live you'll be able to point it at restaurants and buildings and have reviews, details crop up on screen. Or point it at text, posters, dates, times, and create an automatic event. In fact, it pulls up whichever action it thinks is the most applicable based on the what it's understood from the scene. We were able to use it in limited form in photos we'd already snapped in our photos gallery app for the most part. It wasn't that smart. More often than not it didn't know what it was looking at. Or it came close to accurately detecting the object. For instance, thinking an iPhone 8 Plus was an iPhone SE, or a Smeg Espresso machine was a basic drip machine, or a JBL speaker in a box shelf was a light fitting. Clearly, lots to improve here. While this is all nitpicking, the overall experience of Android Oreo on the Pixel is excellent. It's the best form of pure Android currently available, it's snappy, clean, and, with it being on a Pixel, it will always be up to date. If you want a phone that gets about its business with minimal fuss, the Pixel 2 is the way to go. Thanks to have a pure version of Android 8.0 that's finely tuned, and a Snapdragon 835 processor, everything is effortless and fast. 4GB RAM may not seem like a lot in the modern age of 6GB or 8GB RAM equipped phones, we never struggled at all with performance. Whether we were switching between apps, dragging up the app drawer, sliding down notifications or running two apps side by side, it was responsive and buttery smooth. Similarly, loading games and downloading content was as fast as we've seen on any Android phone. In this regard, it's actually refreshing to have a relatively small phone perform as reliably and responsively as the big, bad flagships of the smartphone world. The fingerprint sensor on the back is similarly responsive. Unlocking the phone takes the blink of an eye, and swiping on it to bring down the notification and quick settings shade is a very convenient and reliable method of controlling the interface, to the point where switching back to the old way of just dragging down from the top of the screen seems archaic and decidedly cumbersome. As flagship phones go, the Pixel 2 is quite small, meaning the battery inside is also quite small. Despite this, with moderate use, the Pixel 2 was comfortably able to get through a day. The Pixel could get from wake up at 7.30 am to bedtime around 11.30 pm and just about still have some juice left in it. It's nothing close to being a two-day battery, but even for heavy users we suspect this is going to be good enough to get you through your busy work day. Given that this is only 2,700 mAh, that's mighty impressive performance. Even if you're a really heavy user and you do drain it within a day, the quick charging technology ensures that just 30 minutes plugged in will be enough to more than half fill the battery again. If there's one area that's really impressive on the newest Pixel, it's the camera. And that's no surprise. Like last year, Google has married a single camera with its own AI-powered smarts to create a camera that takes great pictures from front and back cameras virtually every time without any effort from the user. Point your phone at the subject, press the shutter button and it makes images that are sharp, colorful, natural and detailed. In contrasting light conditions it pulls in the might of its AI-powered HDR plus feature to balance it out and still give you a good image. It does, at times, struggle in very low light, although this is seemingly something that's inconsistent. Sometimes, it'll give you surprisingly good pictures with crisp edges, nice colors and sharp details. Other times, like most phone cameras in automatic mode, it'll give you images with plenty of noise and blur. What's interesting here is that the Pixel 2 has only the one camera on the back, and still offers the portrait mode which, in most phones, uses two cameras. When selected, this gets the subject in the foreground sharp and in focus, and adds some heavy attractive background blur behind it. The way it does this is by snapping multiple images within a split second. The Google Smarts comes in again and helps figure out which bit is the background, and which is the subject. And, we have to say, the results are just as good, or bad, as they would be in a dual camera equipped device. You'll still see the odd stray hair blur out in portraits around the edges, 
particularly if what's in the background is a similar color or lightness to the subject. In other words, there needs to be a good visual distinction between the subject and the backdrop to get the best results.